Intramural fibroids. An intramural fibroid is one that grows in the middle of the uterine wall. Intramural fibroids can cause the uterus to appear larger than it actually is and make a woman look pregnant or have a pot belly that can't go away with dieting or exercise. Typical symptoms include excessive menstrual bleeding, menstrual clots, painful periods, feeling bulky, constant pelvic pain or pressure, and bladder or colon problems such as frequent urination, problems in urinating, or constipation, which are all caused by the fibroid pressing on nearby organs. When the fibroids are very big, they can even block the supply of blood, oxygen and nutrients to other organs, such as the kidneys, and in some cases, large intramural fibroids can cause permanent damage to the kidney. Intramural fibroids can also have a negative effect on fertility, and the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York reported that women with these types of fibroids experienced 11% less pregnancies than women with submucosal fibroids and 58% more miscarriages. They also reported an increased risk of caesarean and preterm delivery. Another study carried out at the University of Valencia in Spain concluded that intramural fibroids did not affect the pregnancy rates of women going through IVF, but the Baskent University in Turkey found that the IVF drugs for stimulating ovulation actually increased the size of intramural fibroids. The most common medical treatment for intramural fibroids is abdominal myomectomy. It's particularly recommended by doctors when the fibroids are larger than 5 or 7 centimetres or when multiple fibroids need to be removed. An abdominal myomectomy is a procedure where the fibroids are surgically removed through an incision in the abdomen. The surgeon will pull the uterus through the incision and the fibroid is cut out. The uterus is then repaired with sutures and then put back into place. As with all surgeries, it carries the risk of bleeding and infection, but something to be aware of is adhesions and scar tissue. Some women have found that their scar tissue adheres to the organs, which can lead to further problems such as blocked fallopian tubes. Another option is uterine fibroid embolization. This is a surgical procedure to block the blood vessels that supply the fibroids so that they become starved of blood, oxygen and nutrients and the tissue dies. The Leeds Teaching Hospital in the UK carried out a study of 10 women with intramural fibroids of 10 centimetres or larger. Each of the women had a uterine fibroid embolisation and the doctors followed up their progress after 12 and 36 months. They found that most of the women's symptoms had subsided after this time but two of them were still feeling bulky and two required additional surgery due to damage to their kidneys. After seven months, one of the patients needed a hysterectomy. Although the doctors concluded that uterine artery embolization was a safe procedure, if you look at the statistics, 20% of the women who went through the surgery needed additional surgery. I also found other statistics to show that 30% of the women who have this surgery experience the return of their symptoms within five years. Another complication of uterine artery embolization is heavy vaginal bleeding. The McGill University in Canada studied two women who were experiencing abnormal bleeding after going through the procedure for their intramural fibroids. The surgeons performed an endometrial biopsy and found that both women had necrotic fibroids. The word necrotic means um, when tissue has died due to a lack of blood supply. That's exactly the purpose of a uterine artery embolization. Shortly after the biopsy, both women developed a septic uterus and required a hysterectomy. In their report, doctors concluded that uterine artery embolization, especially when performed for intramural fibroids located close to the uterine lining, carried a very high risk of infection. This makes sense as the dead tissue created by uterine artery embolization can attract a lot of bacteria. 
So if you're not interested in risky procedures that result in dead tissue in your uterus or further surgeries or a hysterectomy, you'd really benefit from looking into natural and alternative remedies for your intramural fibroids. There's no side effects, no infection, no organ damage and no hospital stays with natural remedies. Natural remedies are suitable for women of all ages, including women who've just been diagnosed with their fibroids, women who want to get pregnant with their fibroids, or women who have gone past menopause and still have fibroids. And natural remedies are also suitable for all different types of fibroids. You can find out more about these natural remedies at www.fibroidsetc.com